Welcome back to Control Issues. In this episode, I wanted to take a closer look at a, a little robot that we built for a recent video, a little Happy Halloween video that we shot. And I thought this would be a great time to show you what went into it. Uh, there's some unique things about it that might be useful for you. And so in this video, we're just gonna step through the, the project. There's a couple different things that actually went into catalyzing this project. The The first is I was at a local surplus store recently and I saw these big rubber washers and something about them just spoke to me. I knew I had to get some. I knew I wanted to use them in a project. A very nice durometer in size and so I got a bunch of those and I thought what can I do with these and so I kind of was waiting to do something with that and we were having a conversation internally in R&D about crushing cans and I was thinking most can crushers are for standard soda cans. Uh, it'd be great to have something that could take care of big monster sized cans like this. And so that's when the aha moment, uh, you know, hit me. Hey, I can use these rubber washers, do some sort of roller and crush them. Um, and then the final piece of the puzzle that, that, you know, was the genesis of this project is I've been wanting to show some different ways to work with our Actibotics X-Rail, uh, showing a dual rail setup that makes it very compatible with other Actibotics components where it lines up with the pattern. And uh, I thought doing a gearbox, a gear train um, on the X-Rail would be very challenging, especially at very high speeds. And so it would make for a good project. Uh, and uh, I thought it would be fun and it'd be a cool project to do. So I went ahead and started the project and this is the result. Uh, I call it the Monster Masher since it crushes the monster sized cans. And um, basically it has a high speed brushless motor. It's 100,000 RPM uh, brushless Castle Creations motor. Um, and so this thing just has an incredible amount of speed that needs to be tamed and so it's geared down quite a bit so um, I'd like to go ahead and go through the electronics and then talk about like the frame of the robot and then we'll jump into the gear train and the rollers. This project is a real power hog. I originally started off with a 3S 1000 milliamp hour battery but eventually I bumped it up and just went straight up to two 5000 milliamp our 3S batteries hooked up in parallel uh, and that pl supplies plenty of power for the four drive motors each of which has a stall current of 20 amps which you'll probably never hit in a project like this but you always want to account for that as well as the brushless motor and strip of LEDs inside of the gearbox. For convenience and safety I have a dub double pull single throw toggle switch which acts to disconnect all power from my batteries to the rest of the project so if something goes wrong it's really easy to reach in and just uh, swat that toggle switch over and disconnect all power let's go ahead and take a look at the frame as you can see along the side i have two actibotics x rails um, and they're running in parallel and the thing is they're running uh, so the center of the slots are 1.061 uh, parts so that it lines up with the one and a half inch pattern since that one and a half inch pattern is measured diagonally if you're picturing four holes. Um, and so that opens up a lot of possibilities for compatibility with face through hole and face tapped components uh, from the Actibotics library. So let's talk about the legs with wheels on them that give this project its crazy stance. I knew in a setup like this, the exact angle of attack that those rollers ended up having and overall deck height of the robot would mean the difference between successfully grabbing a can and sucking it up or just driving over it or not grabbing it all the way. So I wanted to have that be really adjustable in the field. And so I'm using one inch bore clamping mounts all the way around on each of these legs. Um, and that's going into a uh, pattern adapter at the top of each of the leg X rails. And so that allows me to adjust the angle of each of the four legs exactly where I want them to be. And then I'm making a 90 degree uh, gearbox with some bevel gears here. Um, and I'm using the dual ball bearing hub on the outside of this channel to support that shaft and that ends up working really well. And overall I've been very happy with the choice to use uh, the, the clamping mounts uh, with the, that 770 pattern adapter um, to give me that flexibility to adjust the angles exactly the way I want. That ended up working really well. Next, let's take a look at this gearbox a little bit more closely. 
One of the pros to working with a slide and lock kind of structure such as X-Rail uh, over channel is you can use whatever two gears, as long as they're um, compatible gears, you can use them together along the X-Rail because you can slide them until the spacing is just right and then lock it down in place. Whereas on channel, you have to get two gears that are going to reach each other given the interstitial pattern along the channel. So um, you have more options here, but it also means you, uh, you have more ability to make them align incorrectly. So you have more control and that's a double-edged sword. Um, and that makes a project like this very challenging because the incredible speed of the brushless motor is not very forgiving uh, and you also are um, seeing a lot of impact force when it grabs a can and crushes it so um, everything has to be just right um, and you also run into um, a lot of potential vibration from a high-speed setup like this and so you want to make sure everything is perfectly balanced which means you're not going to use anything that's clamping unless you have two that are facing in opposite directions. Um, but most of the time, um, you're going to have to go set screw at least on the pinion gear and the, the, the shaft coupler that's going from the eighth inch shaft on the brushless motor to the quarter inch um, D shaft that's going out to the pinion gear. And so you, when you're working with, with um, set screws, you really, really, really want to make sure that they are as tight as possible um, and that you don't rot them out. And so you want to make sure whatever hex key you're using has a nice, clean, sharp edge. If it doesn't, um, you want to just lop it off with a Dremel or something until you get to a point where it has a nice, clean, sharp edge. If you're using a ball end, I wouldn't recommend that for uh, set screws because um, they are going to be more prone to routing it out and you want to be able to make sure that they are really nice and tight in there. Um, I also recommend using some Loctite if you're doing something that's very high speed like this because you don't want a set screw coming out when it's spinning at those kind of speeds. As you can see, I've actually made an uh, enclosure around my whole gear train here. Um, and so this is a combination of some plastic plates and some 3D printed parts and what you don't see on the inside is there are a lot of aluminum spacers um, that are connecting this all together and um, it's actually, actually a combination of standoffs and spacers depending on which one it is you're looking at and that holds this all together and mounts it to the X-Rail and the, the primary idea here is to keep debris out of those gears because the second anything gets in there when you're spinning at those kind of speeds, you're just, you're done. Um, if you got a pebble, if it picked up a pebble or a rock or something, uh, that'd be pretty bad news for your gear train. You may have noticed that I'm gearing this down quite a bit, which um, is because originally um, this project was so fast that I couldn't uh, even keep these washers on the one inch OD tubing. So these rubber washers have a three quarter inch ID on them and they press fit very, very, very tight onto this one inch OD tube, which is great. But um, 100,000 RPM is no joke. And uh, originally I spun these so fast that they just got bigger and just walked down the shaft. Um, I even blew a few apart. Uh, so that's it. that kind of speed can do a lot of crazy stuff. And so it is geared down quite a bit, although between the two uh, rollers, which are actually spinning at different speeds, um, they're spinning between 7 and 12, almost 13,000 RPM. So still very, very, very fast. And so the spacing in between the rollers is also going to make a big difference in a project like this. Um, too close and it's not going to grab onto the can enough to pull it through. And probably if I had larger washers or bigger drums that would allow me to get them closer together because by the time they contour out and get to the point where they grab the can, um, the, the part where they're closest could be closer altogether. But given the ones I wanted to work with, uh, this is about as close as I could get it and still very consistently grab cans and pull them up and crush them. The fun thing is you can hit a can uh, several times and each time you're just going to mess it up and crumple it even more. 
Um, and so this project wasn't necessarily about grabbing a can and very precisely and cleanly making a flat pancake out of it. Uh, that sort of thing has been done. I just wanted to do something that would be fun and grab them and throw them and be you know, violent and theatrical. Uh, so that was kind of the goal of this project. Albeit completely impractical, this project was a blast to make. It was fun to run. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you have any questions, as always, send us an email to tech at servocity.com.